Now there is a growing body of evidence that bringing more women into the workplace, including into senior management, spurs innovation and productivity. Research also shows that companies that hire women executives and board members thrive and often outperform those that do not. One recent study, however, found that more than 70% of companies in emerging Asian economies have no women on their governing boards. Now, by some estimates, by the World Bank and others, restrictions on women's economic participation are costing the APEC region more than $40 billion in lost GDP every year. As the host of APEC, last year the United States focused on tapping into the vast economic potential of women across the Asia Pacific. And in San Francisco, in preparation for the meeting in Honolulu, member economies targeted four critical areas, access to capital, access to markets, skills and capacity building, and leadership. And then in St. Petersburg, again in the run-up to the APEC meeting here in Vladivostok, we agreed among ourselves and announced more than 70 new programs and policies to implement the goals in those four areas. Now, the United States has launched new initiatives to train central and commercial banks in inclusive lending practices and to help governments use their purchasing power to support women entrepreneurs, and small businesses. We will stay focused on these challenges because no economic system can be truly open, free, transparent, and fair if half the population is excluded and exploited.